Hello everyone and welcome back to this course on Windows 10. In this module we're going to be taking a look at backing up and restoring data. And there are a number of tools available in Windows 10 to help you with this and it's really going to be up to you to determine which one best suits you. So first of all we're going to be looking at the principal backup facility called File History. And then we're going to look at the legacy backup solution, Backup and Restore Windows 7. And finally, I'm going to talk you through system image backups. Now, the purpose of backing up is really to safeguard your files from anything disastrous happening to your computer. So essentially, when we're doing a backup, we're taking a copy of the files that we have on our computer and we are copying them to an external device. And the reason we do that is because if you imagine that your laptop gets stolen, so maybe when you're out and about in the world with your laptop, you lose your laptop or someone steals it, if you don't have backup copies of your files, then those files are going to be gone forever. Similarly, if something happens to your device, so maybe you have a hard drive failure or your computer just stops working, you're also not going to be able to retrieve those files. So those are a couple of different ways that you can lose all of your files. Now, when it comes to backing up or implementing a backup regime, there's one common mistake that's very prevalent, but you want to make sure that you avoid. And that is backing up your files on the same device that they're located. So for example, if you have a laptop that has two different disks, you wouldn't back up files from your C drive onto another disk on that laptop. Because again, if the whole laptop breaks or you lose your laptop, you're still going to have lost all of those files. What you want to be doing is copying them to an external device. Now that might be something like a DVD. It could be a USB stick. Or if you do utilize cloud storage like OneDrive or maybe even something like Google Drive, you're going to want to make sure that your files are in there. Now, me personally, I use OneDrive all the time, so I know that my files are safe. If something was to happen to my laptop, I can simply log into OneDrive and I can have access to those files. However, in this example, just to show you a different way of doing things, I'm going to be using a USB memory stick in order to show you the process of backing up and restoring. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my memory stick into the USB port on my laptop. And you can see there in the bottom corner, it's recognized my USB drive and it's assigned it to drive D. And if I open up File Explorer, and scroll down, you'll see right at the bottom there, it says USB drive D. There's currently nothing on it because I haven't copied any files to it yet. Now, when it comes to backing up, you can really determine how frequently you want to back up your system files or just the files that you use every day. You may decide that you want to do that on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis. But again, that's something for you to determine. Now, the first method I'm going to show you is something called file history. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump straight in to file history settings. Now, again, it did used to be called file history, but you'll see now the best match is backup settings. So that's the one we want to select. And it's jumped me straight to the backup page. Now you can see currently it says backup using file history. Back up your files to another drive and restore them if the originals are lost, damaged or deleted. Now currently I have that setting turned off. I'm going to come back to this in a moment and turn it on. But what I want to do first of all is just jump into more options. So you can see at the top here it's telling me the size of the backup. So this is the size of the files currently located on my PC. Underneath it's recognized my removable disk, so my USB drive, and it's telling me how much space I have on that, so 58.5 gig, and it's telling me backup is disabled. So now we have this backup my files area, and this is where you can select the frequency. So what essentially this will do is it will look for any changes and saved changed versions of files. So essentially, it's going to keep multiple older versions of files so you can then go back to any older versions that you have. And you can see all the choices that you have there in the drop down. 
Now what you choose to select in here will very much depend on the kind of work that you do. Now I would say if that you don't make changes to files very often, then there's probably not really too much point in having it save every hour. You would probably be more suited to setting this option at daily. However, if you're doing a lot of work and maybe you're making constant changes to a small number of files and you want to be able to go back to them, then you're probably going to want to set this to one of these options towards the top. So maybe every 10 minutes, every 15 minutes, so on and so forth. The second option here is keep my backups for how long. So you can essentially put a time restriction on how long your backups are kept for. So you can choose from here one month, three months, six months, or there's an option in here for until space is needed. Now I tend to keep mine set to forever, which is the default setting. And if I need more space, then I get more space. Now let's look at the list of the folders that it's backing up. And you can see here, it's basically a list of my user folders. So you can see here it's backing up Deb A, Deb A OneDrive, searches, documents, pictures, downloads, so on and so forth. So pretty much everywhere where I'm likely to save files, it's currently backing up. Now, if you wanted to add a folder from somewhere else, you can definitely do that. You have an add a folder button at the top and you can just go in and select which folder you want it to also back up. And if we scroll down, you'll see that you also have the option to exclude folders as well. So for example, currently mine is backing up the downloads folder. Now I don't tend to need to have my downloads folder backed up because normally if I download something, I then pretty much immediately move it somewhere else. So whether it's a picture that I've downloaded that will get moved to the pictures folder or whatever it might be, I normally take it out of downloads. So for this, I'm going to say add a folder and I'm going to say I want to exclude the downloads folder. And finally, this option that we have at the bottom, back up to a different drive. It says you'll need to stop using your current backup drive before you add a new one. This won't delete any files from your current backup drive. So essentially, if you find out that the device that you're backing up to, whether that's an external drive, USB stick or DVD, there will come a point where that drive is going to fill up. So you're probably going to want to use another DVD or another USB memory stick to continue backing up your files. Now, what you need to make sure you do is that you come into here and you say stop using drive before you switch to the new drive. Now, I'm just about ready to start backing up to my USB memory stick. But just before I do, I'm just going to quickly jump into advanced settings. Now, what I want to do in here is just to make sure that file history is happy with the drive that I've selected. And you can see here that it's showing my removable disk. So this is my USB memory stick, essentially. And what you might find is that when you come into here, particularly if this is the first time that you're using this, you'll find that file history is turned off like that. So what you'll need to make sure you do is come in here and just click turn on. So essentially file history is now turned on and it's going to be running those backups regularly, depending on the settings that I've set. What I'm now going to do is to accidentally delete a file and then show you how to restore it. So I've just jumped across to my videos folder on my C drive and you can see that I have a few different videos in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete a couple of these and then I'm going to show you how to restore them. So I'm going to delete this video of the guitarist and then these two that I have of the galaxy. And I'm just going to right click and select delete. So now if I want to restore those from my backup, if I jump down to the search menu and just type in restore, and you can see the option there, restore your files with file history. So now I can jump into that videos folder there are the backed up files. I can select guitarist and the two that I deleted. And all I need to do is click on the big green restore button. And you'll notice that it says it's going to restore those files to their original location. And there we go. File Explorer has popped open. It's in the videos folder. And there are those files restored from my backup. Let's now look at the legacy backup and restore options. So I'm going to jump into control panel. And one of the options we have in here is backup and restore Windows 7. 
So this essentially can be used to backup and restore instead of file history. So what I want to do is go into Setup Backup. So you can see here it's asking me to select where I want to save my backup. Now you might have multiple things listed in here depending on what you have plugged into your computer. The only external drive or USB memory stick I have plugged in is this one just here. So I'm going to select it. And also note that I have an option to save on a network. Now on this occasion, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stick with my memory stick and I'm going to click on next. Now here it's asking, what do you want to back up? So the default option or the recommended option is let Windows choose. So essentially with this option, Windows will back up data files saved in libraries, on the desktop and in default Windows folders. And these items will be backed up on a regular schedule. The second option you have is to choose them yourself. So you can go in and select libraries and folders, and you can also select whether to include a system image in the backup. So if you go for the let me choose option and click on next, you can see here it's going to list out everything that I have on my PC and I can go through and I can select exactly which folders I want to include in the backup. So let's scroll through and I'm going to expand users. I'm going to expand my folder. And this time I'm just going to back up that downloads folder. And you can see underneath we have an option for include a system image of the drives. Now a system image is essentially a copy of your operating system, the Windows operating system and all the files required to make that work. And we're going to talk about that a little more at the end of this module. Now, one thing I'll point out is that you can see for me, this is grayed out and that's because a system image can't be backed up to the type of memory stick that I'm using. But for the time being, I'm just going to select this downloads folder and I'm going to click on next. Now I get a chance to review my backup settings. So it's saying backup location is the D drive. It's showing me which folders I'm backing up. And then we have the schedule at the bottom. So currently it's going to back up every Sunday at 7 p.m. And if I want to change that, I can click on change schedule and I might want to say every Monday at 10 p.m. Click on OK. And now I'm going to say save settings and run backup. So I've just jumped back to that backup and restore Windows 7 legacy option in control panel. And I want to just further that train of thought on backing up or creating system images. As I mentioned, a system image basically takes a copy of all of your operating system files. And the reason why that's useful is if anything was to happen to your operating system, you could essentially reinstall Windows 10 from your backed up system files. So in order to do that or create a system image, you would jump into here and you have an option here, create a system image. It's then going to ask you where you want to back up. And the first option here for me is on a hard disk and it's got my USB drive selected. Now, as I mentioned before, if I was doing a system backup right now, I wouldn't be able to use this particular memory stick because it's not formatted correctly for the Windows operating system to be backed up to. But you'll see that I also have a couple of other options on one or more DVDs or to a network location. So all you need to do is to select your options, click on next and work your way through that wizard to create your own system image. Now you would normally use system image in conjunction with the backup and restore of individual files if something absolutely terrible happened to your system. You'd want to restore your system files and then you'd want to restore your user files and data from file history. And I would advise you to take a system image when you have Windows 10 working how you want, keep it safe, run your backups daily. And if the worst does happen, you'd be able to restore your system image and then recover your files. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole process of creating a system image now, but I do suggest that you take one. And then from time to time, it's a good idea to take another one to make sure that it's kept up to date. That's it for this module. I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. Now, to see the full seven and a half hour Windows 10 course, click over there. And click over there to watch all the videos in this Windows 10 playlist.